Hey everybody and welcome to the greatest wild ride of all time. I think I can safely say that this guest is the most requested, most in-demand guest that we could possibly get. That's right, it's Johnny Knoxville, the main star of the number one movie in the world right now, Jackass Forever, which is still in theaters and really could use a visit from you this weekend. But man, I'm so excited. This episode, we get into every little detail of the things that were not allowed to be shown on Jackass. And that's right, it gets very, very juicy. So I want to start this just like I start every single day which is with Athletic Greens. Yes, man, my diet has kind of gone to hell, and I'm not getting enough greens, and I really don't want to become unhealthy. So I go for one scoop of this stuff, and in every single scoop, I've got 75 vitamins, minerals, whole food sourced superfoods, probiotics, and dude, all kinds of good stuff. And... It tastes absolutely delicious. When I get done drinking it with my with my water in the morning, I'm totally hydrated. I've got all of the nutrients I need for the whole day, and I feel great about it because this stuff is absolutely delicious. I'm telling you, I live by it, I swear by it, and I love it. And I want you to try it too. Plus, dude, get a load of this. If you go to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo, they're going to give you an entire year's supply of immune-boosting vitamin D and five free travel packets of AG1, which is what I use every morning. So look out for your health, man. Become healthier and fill in the gaps in your diet. Take care of your, your gut health, your your overall health. Get on down to athleticgreens.com slash Stevo. Now, let's get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, Johnny Knoxville. Woo woo! Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. You know Scott Randolph and the gorgeous Paul Brisky? Yes, yes. Hello, sir. Um, people have been begging for this one. This podcast is going to do unbelievably well oh well we hope so yeah um so yeah dude um but the, we recently had this awesome time uh sitting down with the hollywood reporter telling uh the oral history of jackass mm -hmm. I, I had a blast doing that yeah that was funny <laughs> but when, I, I didn't come away uh i always understood that your story was that like right out of high school, you moved to LA to go become a big movie star. Yeah, like, um, well, a month out of high school, I moved out to Los Angeles to attend the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. And for a six weeks program, that was my excuse to have my parents let me go to Los Angeles. And I attended the first two weeks and didn't go back because I was 18 and in Los Angeles and I was just partying so much. Uh, and, I spent the summer out here, ran through all my money, and my parents convinced me to come home. And uh, I went home for a few months, worked at a restaurant, made some more money, and came back for good in January of 90. Okay. When you were working at the restaurant, were you filming stuff, or were you just working? Knox on that was a busboy. But, like, you weren't, like, because when, when did that video of you with the shooting yourself in the chest that was like 95 90 yeah 95 96 probably shot in 95 and came out in 96 yeah something like that yeah, yeah that that whole bit of like self-defense was all included in that or maybe yeah. shot in 96 came out in 97 but that yeah that was, that was the first time you ever had filmed anything Right, was this, um, and I wasn't even going to film it. Right. I was going to just write an article, and Tremaine suggested I film it. As I always understood it, your story, I, I, and I describe it that way, is like the Bad Company song, Shooting Star. Is that kind of fair to say? Like, Well, I, 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 I mean, well, there were a lot of pills and whiskey beside my bed <laughs> <laughs> at one time. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that, that's your version of it. That's, that's wonderful, uh, yeah. I guess. I, I love it. I mean, like, John, so Johnny was a schoolboy when he heard his first Beatles song, but like, it's like when you were a schoolboy, you decided you wanted, like, you were in love with the movies. 
Right. I remember when we were filming the first Jackass movie, you had this, like, I think it was on your iPod. You had, like, old school, uh, like, classical movies, like, that you were listening to the audio of it. And I was like, what are you doing? Oh, right, right. The, like, the theme song to Cinema Paradiso or, or uh, bits from Casablanca. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, I mean, like it was crazy. Like, it wasn't music. It was like you were listening to the actual, scenes. just the yeah, mm. just the audio of scenes from movies. Yes. And I was like so confused by that, and you were like, "Hey, man, I, I love movies." Yeah. I, <sighs> That's how my family we ate around the television, either watching television like Sanford and Son or the Andy Griffith Show, or watching films. Yeah. So that's how we connected. Yeah, you know, just going from there, and, my, and it, it's my version of your story. But it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, you say, "Mom, I'm going to go away. I'm going to be a big star." You go out to L.A. and uh, and and don't do shit for the first six <laughs> years. Besides, I, I studied a little, but mostly I was partying and spinning my wheels. I mean, I knew you. I know you wanted to be a big movie star, and uh, and you did find some success in television commercials. Right. Well, when my then girlfriend got pregnant and we had a daughter on the way, that was the point in my life where I decided I have to do something. So right. I just started trying to make anything happen, any positive step forwards. Uh, so my friend John Linson got me a job writing for magazines like Bikini Magazine, and, uh, which is now defunct. And my next door neighbor at the time was Antoine Fuqua, and he helped me get a commercial agent. And it's funny because I never really got callbacks before I started writing for magazines. But when I started writing for magazines, it took the pressure off. I'm like, well, I'm, I can do this, so I don't have to lean so heavy on this, and it relaxed me on the auditions. Then I started getting callbacks constantly. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Uh, you it's liked, funny. There was less desperation there. Yes, and less nervousness. Uh -huh. I had such a fear of talking on camera. Like wow. I remember, I wanted to be in. I decided in high school I wanted to move out to Los Angeles and be in the movies. And we filmed something. They filmed something at my high school, my junior year. It was something about I don't know. They filmed us talking about nutrition. And everyone else was like really good on camera. And I was terrified. I couldn't even say anything. And so it took me a long time to get over that fear of talking on camera. Hmm. Were you, were you terrified of talking on camera, Jackass, the first season? No. Yeah, you had no. It. He had it by then. You had it by yeah, then? Yeah, yeah, no. I, like by the time uh, I filmed the self defense equipment bit, uh, like you're pretty I was comfortable. totally comfortable, yeah. Yeah. But when you're like, so you get the job writing for Big Brother. I will say, I'll come back to this. Sir. Sure with my friends filming. Yeah. I would still get nervous walking right. on a Hollywood movie set mm. thinking I'm going to get fired at any second. Like the read-throughs. I thought you were going to say like the ringer. <laughs> no! Hey! I like the ringer. Right, I like right, the right. ringer. Theaters, I like that. So what, what was your... Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say like because uh, I never really thought of it this way but when you're writing for Big Brother in your head are you still like I'm just going to do this while I try to become a serious actor. Like the whole time this was like kind of sure. just like a day job while you're still pursuing being an I actor. Was, yeah, I was trying to pursue both. Whatever click first, that's what I wanted. Cool, okay. Yeah, and and uh, so you, you've got some television commercials going, you're, you're writing for magazines, but you really like, as, as I understand it, my version of your story is that you just kind of felt like, okay, man, I'm I'm gonna now it's time to really make something happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna put myself on the map, and that was kind of what the self defense equipment was. It was like a big thing to just get get the attention, get the ball going. Oh man, we're about to hear how Johnny Knoxville's rise to stardom truly began. And I bet you've never seen him or me with any facial hair because we always like to keep a nice clean shave. And if you're looking for a nice clean shave for a very reasonable price, boy do I have an exciting deal for you because I swear by these products from Harry's. I've been using them for years now. It's just good quality, the best quality you can get. No gimmicks, nothing but just a killer razor and for first time customers of Harriers if you're going to take advantage of this opportunity you get this starter kit it comes with a five blade razor a weighted ergonomic handle foaming shave gel and a cool travel case to protect your blades when you're on the road and man 
I love it, dude. I always have a good clean shave and I love my Harry's. If you go to harrys.com slash Stevo, you get this starter kit, which is a $13 value, but you're only going to pay three bucks. I'm telling you, you can't beat it. I love it. So go to harrys.com. Com, that's h a r r y s dot com slash Debo to pounce on this deal because you're gonna love it. Now let's hear about Johnny Knoxville's big break. And so you've got this idea, and you're gonna do a, a product review of self defense equipment with the, the the red pepper spray point blank in the eyes, the stun gun, the taser gun. And and what the world didn't know about was the the Smith and Wesson 38 caliber handgun. The plan was you're going to shoot yourself <laughs> with, with a bulletproof vest on, and the people don't know that because MTV wouldn't show that part. But uh, <clears throat> that's really the pivotal moment where everything, like that's like the the thing. Yeah, that's what clicked for me, um, and I felt like also. When I got to Big Brother, I felt like it was a special group of guys. And But the self-defense equipment was the first time in my life where I felt like I had momentum. Yeah. Mm. Did, did you, uh, were you introduced to Big Brother in a professional capacity before the self-defense equipment? I met Jeff on a video that Spike was directing for uh, a band, for Wax, right? Okay. And... I only remember this because the date, because it was the day of the Oklahoma City bombing. We're all on the set and we heard that and we're like, oh, Jesus. So that stuck in my head that that's the first day I met Jeff. And I think a year or so goes by and I went down to World Industries to meet with them because I was writing for mags by that point. Uh And But I had it was a skateboarding magazine and I didn't have any idea what to write for a skateboarding magazine because I, I didn't skate. So it wasn't until I had the self-defense equipment idea that I was like, oh, maybe that's something they might like. Right. Ah, oh, man. And, and then I remember seeing you in Big Brother magazine with the, the first the self-defense and then like then in the bull ring. Like you were doing stuff with bulls just for the pages of Big Brother. That- yeah, I was just trying to think of ideas. But <laughs> the, I was disappointed in myself that day. Uh, because I went up to Gary LeFue's ranch in uh-huh. Pomo, California, and I got on a so-so bull, uh-huh. right? He had other bulls, but I got on a so-so bull, and I felt like a real failure, <laughs> right? And, <clears throat> and after that, because he said he had a bull up there named Mr. Mean that like, even the cowboys hated to ride. And so that stuck in my head, and when we decided to do the show, I'm like, I have to... Uh, get my self-respect back and uh, get on Mr. Mean. <laughs> Only you think of it that way. That, um, can, can you tell us about that? my favorite thing you ever wrote for Big Brother magazine, which was where uh, you had, um, you, you, you were posing as an agent, prank calling professional skateboarders. Oh, right. <laughs> and getting them to do like silly Right. Campbell Soup commercials. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he was calling like the biggest names in skateboarding, mm-hmm. saying, I'm an agent and I've got the, you know, I've got something I think you'd be perfect for. And it was just like the worst look of, you know, pitching them like, you know, and would you be comfortable with your shirt off? Like, you know, and, you know these pro skaters say, oh yeah, totally, man. Like, he, he was saying, how do you look with your shirt off? Like, yeah, man, I'm pretty ripped. <laughs> you know, like, it was, dude, it was the, that was the funniest thing ever, man. And, uh, and you said that, that back in the day that they're, you know, with, with the partying, I, I'm pretty amazed that, that you seem to have just put it down, you know, like all of the, the you know, with the crazy pills and the whiskey. and. Yeah, no, I, I still have drinks now, now and again, uh, but the pills I put down um, and... Did, did you have to do anything to put, put them down? It was it just like probably when you have kids you probably want to tone it down a bit right yeah sure yeah well I mean with Madison like it kind of with the opposite you know I I wouldn't he wasn't ready yet I wasn't ready yet and like I wouldn't because I would see my father drunk and I didn't want her to see me drunk so I try not to 
do that at home. Yeah. Right. But I go out and just get smashed. So yeah. I was, yeah, there were points in my life where I was partying way too much. Yeah. Um, did it, did but, it just kind of phase out or was there a moment where you're like, I got to make a change? Um, it, I think after number two, you know, and I, yeah. I got together with Naomi and I, and it started, uh, calming down then. Yeah, I would notice that because on number two, and you've said this plenty, that we were all on our absolute worst Oh, my behavior. God. And everything that we did just worked so, like everything we did on camera, like mm -hmm. just worked so well in that movie. It was like, God. And, uh, and yeah, your uh, free time was all just about behaving badly, partying. And then <laughs> four years later, Jackass 3D, like it just seemed like you were, you had done an about phase. You were a totally different guy. There was no bad behavior. There was no partying. You were just singularly focused on pouring all of your time and energy into trick nut shots. Like, <laughs> like you, you really you traded you traded like one addiction one upset, for another. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I, I I think that's fair. I was uh I would get obsessed with shooting, and also I think maybe it's a fair thing to put out there that I may have been addicted to doing the larger stunts, the stunts that really could take me out. I think yeah. I got really obsessed in that too, which I'm still coming out of. Right. Right? Because I know I can never get in with another bull again, but I physically miss it, if that makes sense. I get it. I get it. And, and, and um, we just did the press junket for Jackass Forever, and um, it, 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 like, it seemed like we did hundreds of interviews, and it seemed also that a lot of the, the questions from the interviewers were like, so this, you know, this is it, the swan song, it's over. Yeah, and, 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 I, and I said, well, actually, after each and every one of the first three Jackass movies, Knoxville declared on the record that it was over and this fourth movie is actually the first time he hasn't declared that i keep saying like we may, we might we might not but there's no right. like definitive answer but i i think these reporters <coughs> have to come in with some angle right right so it's whatever i, I understand think, i think what they're what they're interpreting is uh you're saying that you're done risking your life. You can't get in, get in there with bulls anymore. This is right. the last movie that you're really going to risk your life for. Right, right. And thank God, because I don't want you to... I, don't, I, don't, I, I never wanted to see you with the bull in the first place. I definitely never want to see you with another bull again. And if anybody reacts to your saying that it, you know, in any kind of a critical way, let me put it out there that it was on... The third movie, I showed up and I said, dude, I'm not going to risk my life. I've survived enough. You know, I've made it this far. I've lost my fucking sense of humor for being in a wheelchair or a coffin right. over, over a dumbass fucking jackass stunt. <laughs> I'm not doing it. And, and I pretty much stuck to my guns. I said, I said if, uh, if, if it's a th risk of, of paralysis or death, I'm not doing it. But if there's not that risk, then I'm in. And I don't think I backed out of anything. Yeah, no, the, you. I mean, but if you didn't say that, I don't think anyone would realize it because you right. performed so mm -hmm. great in Jackass Three and Forever. So, well, thanks, man. Now I showed up with the same roles on Jackass Forever, and one weekend I, I, I called it that the treadmill stunt was uh, a real problem for for the spine and the brain for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I called it, and I and I I, I consciously deliberately threw my rules out the window for that you so, did yeah so i understand what you're saying when when you when you say that you miss doing the physical stunts because here i, I knew not to do that and and how I long were you out for when you passed out you know like it, 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 I, I feel like a minute or so the, you know the, the duration of time that you're knocked unconscious is a lot like uh, the height of bridges. Any asshole who ever jumped off a 20-foot bridge says, oh, man, I, it was 100 feet, you know? like, and, and anybody who's ever been knocked unconscious, oh, man, it was minutes, five minutes to it. But, like, you, you timed 
the the bull. Uh, yeah, I, I I specifically timed the bull, and it was like about a minute five seconds, just because I want to know. Right. I want to know what happened to me, <laughs> and um, uh, God, there was a, a point that I was everybody going to... everybody was saying that you were out for like five minutes. No, on that's the not bowl. true. Well, it probably right. feels like that when you're yeah. like, is he gonna wake? back up you have no idea if you're knocked out you have no concept of time right sure the only way to know for sure is to go back and watch the footage yeah because my memory was erased for a little bit um what's the difference when you pass out like snoring or not snoring is like snoring you're fucking out or snoring is your the doctor says you're trying to swallow your tongue Mm. so yeah because you didn't snore did you uh, i snored with the bull and i snored with butterbean yeah I don't know if... Uh, well, you didn't snore on the treadmill. I, I, I couldn't tell Jeez. you. I, I don't have any idea. Fuck. Was this like, you know, recklessness in character for you? Like when you started doing this stuff for Big Brother and like if a friend who you grew up with saw that, would they be like, there he goes again? Or would they be like, whoa, Knoxville's like Man, or, what a, you know, what a out of control. what a great question. Well, I, I, you know, honestly, I was a little rambunctious, but I wasn't the most wild or rambunctious guy at the school you weren't like let's jump off the roof and let's fucking do this no not really yeah so, so, but I mean the, the, the people who knew you when you were in high school and grade school and they saw you on Jackass were they like wait where did this come no from? no it wasn't it's not a shock to them okay. because I was a, a loud mouth and you know was always in some some kind of trouble but uh, it wasn't that big of a shock but I wasn't the wildest or by far the toughest but I mean that's the thing about Jackass none of us are that tough right so it's like I think that's what people can connect with this we're not some macho guys out there trying to uh, you know uh, the, there is uh, an every man well I mean we are every man and uh, but I will say about the treadmill it could have been less <laughs> The, the results could have been a little better for our heads, but there was a pad down right before we filmed, like a, a right. rubber mat down, and I just said, lose it. For sure. Because <laughs> it just, when you see pads on the Jackass set, it doesn't work. And right. do I regret it? <laughs> no. I, you know, we're all okay, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I, I have to maintain the... Sure. The, I remember the, after that, Dave England called me up. He's like, hey, dude, just a heads up. Like, Steve hit his head pretty hard. Meanwhile, I got a text from Steve booking a tour to Austin. And he's like, <laughs> and I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? You had this whole tour going on. You're like, okay, let's get this guy on the road. And I'm like, I, Dave just told me that you were out. And like, yeah, yeah, I'm in the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he booked a tour. Hardest working man in show business right here. <laughs> For sure. It's possible. Um, um, you know, I, I would like to take this moment to to let everybody know how awesome the Jackass Slingshot game is. Oh, the Jackass Human Slingshot on mobile game? Yes. Mm. Uh, right. You can get that on Google Play or the App Store. So uh, it's actually a lot it, of fun. Yeah, the, cool. the, uh, if you have an iPhone, you go to the App Store and you type in Jackass Human Slingshot. That'll do it. And, and if you have an Android, you go to the... I have no the fucking Android. I have no fucking idea. idea. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and e- either which way, you're an absolute idiot if you don't do that. Yes, yeah. thank you, Steve O. <laughs> now yeah. I'm interested. Now yeah. I gotta go. And yeah. and you know, and, and plus, dude, look at this shirt I'm wearing. Just people listening can't see it, but I'm wearing the, the Dick House shirt with the rainbow. I mean this is an iconic American treasure, the, the the Dick House logo. And only just recently did Dick House start selling merch. Yeah, we, we sold it like kind of low key, but never in a focused way that we yeah. have now. Well, do you guys want to talk about the thing with the thing with the pink with you guys together and the. Yeah, we've got uh, the what? Like Tony Soprano the, the, the over here. Like, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we, we, mm. You had never signed merch to sell ever once in your life. And, and then all of a sudden I designed this skateboard with uh, it's half me, half you, and this great design. Now let me tell you, if you're going to go and get one of these skateboards that we're talking about, which both Johnny Knoxville and I signed, and a lot of people will, you know how it's going to get shipped to you? With ShipStation. This is the secret behind all of my merchandising operation, is that we ship everything so easily at the best possible rates and just fast and efficient. ShipStation. I'm telling you, man, it's 
e-commerce these days. And if you're not in the e-commerce game, then you're blowing it, dude, because this is how I am rising above, man. I'm not going to get away with doing what I do forever, and so I'm trying to sock away some cash so that I'll be taken care of later. And I'd like for you to do the same. And if you want to ship more stuff, easier, cheaper, faster, ship stations the way to go. I swear to you this is how I ship everything from stevo.com and you know I'm always promoting that stuff. So, I'm going to give you a 60-day free trial with ShipStation. And this like interface that you're going to be using no matter what you sell from, if it's on Amazon, if it's on Etsy, if it's you got your own little website, every different platform seamlessly integrates on ShipStation's interface. It is so easy and it is so helpful plus they give you rates with all of the different carriers that are normally reserved for Fortune 500 companies. You're going to be shipping everything way cheaper. And like I said, a 60 60 day free trial if you go to shipstation.com now when you get there you're going to click the microphone in the top right when you click that you're going to type in the promo code stevo and you are set up to get to shipping like using it for free for 60 days I'm telling you it is time to make some money so Go to ShipStation.com, click the microphone in the top right, type in the promo code Stevo, and make ship happen. Yeah, dude. Now, let's get back to the game. How did I talk you into signing those? Um, I don't know. It was a really great graphic, and we'd never done anything like that before, and I thought it would be fun. It's, it's so cool that you know like I, I look at that I've got I've got one up on the wall in my in my edit bay, this skateboard and you know have that like the left side of the face is you and the and then the right side of the face is me, and uh, God I love it. And man. we only have a little bit left, so they better go get them. Right, yeah. And you, check yeah. it out, yeah, the Johnny O skateboard. Yeah, you guys got some signs. But do uh, too. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you you haven't practiced your signature a whole lot cuz sometimes you sign at Coxville, sometimes you sign at Knoxville. Well, sometimes... it's just my poor penmanship. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the end slips away a little bit. Like when I was in grade school, like I would get straight A's except for penmanship and it would be solid C or C minus. Yeah, you ran wow. like a pharmacist. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Tell us about uh, your baseball career. Like, that's a little known fact, huh? That you were like a hardcore baseball guy. Yes, I love baseball. And when I was moving out here, it was like, am I going to go try and play baseball? Uh, honestly, I probably went to a junior college first. Uh, I could have played in junior college or, and eventually maybe have made a move up uh, what position to Division One Pitcher. But, yeah, well. pitcher. But I already, like, I was coming out here for the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and my senior year, I kind of blew my elbow out. Uh, we still had a great season, but I was like, God, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of Knoxville, because I thought, like, I was just, I'm probably going to get in trouble if I stay. Yeah. Most of my friends either got in trouble or became cops. There's, like, three or four that, you know, thrived. <laughs> hmm. Um. So, for people who maybe don't know, Knoxville is not your birth last name. When did you adopt the name Johnny Knoxville? Like, when did that? When I started writing for magazines. I didn't want to write under PJ Clapp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Philip yeah. John Clapp. Yeah. It's like, I don't want to read that guy. Yeah. Johnny Knoxville is a bit uh, and, and so, when uh, one of the stunts that you did for, for Big Brother... And, and, I, and I don't even know if you guys were cooking up the idea of Jackass yet, but you you try with zero skateboarding skills. You tried to drop in on a half pipe, like a ten foot tall vert ramp. Right. And you might as well have just jumped off the deck and straight to the flat bottom. <laughs> Sideways, you know, because, right on your shoulder. Because that's what happened. Uh, it was the most brutal slam ever, and it was just absolutely fantastic. Well, my fear was if I undercommit, I'm just going to slide down on my back. So, I didn't want to waste anyone's time, so I just stepped <laughs> off the cliff. Yeah, you, you, you didn't waste anybody's time. It was the most brutal slam. And, and I had heard that someone said that 
for like years after that that your shoulder was really messed up from that slam and that like you had trouble like turning the steering wheel of your car like you couldn't make a left hand turn in your car because of that or something possibly i remember having trouble driving my car after the butter bean ko because it gave me vertigo okay oh. and when i would I'd lay my cock my head to the side to lay down the room would spin if i drive around a curve the you know the car okay. would spin so i had to get on some medication for that it took a while to wear off uh, uh but it's po yeah sure like sometimes you get hurt and it's tough to drive your car <laughs> <laughs> you um and you told you said that you lost your sense of smell yeah i have to be right up on something to smell it and it's not that great so my sense of taste is probably compromised I, my nose has been busted a few times so Oh, so that's what you attribute that I to. I believe so. I, otherwise, I don't have any idea. Hmm. And, and there was a point uh, that where, where your back was super compromised, right? Like on Jackass 3D, we had like a professional, like, uh, what, what was the guy with the massage table? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just a, basically a, a chiropractor who could, because what my back, I blew my back out at the end of Jackass number two. I would just be walking down the street and my back would seize up and I'd fall over. Oof. Wow. After a bit? No, no, no. This is just movies over. I'm trying to live my life, and my back would seize up. And if someone wasn't there to help me, I would just fall over. Wow. Um, because I uh, herniated a disc in my lower back, and when my uh, body, when these psoas muscles, they're like big sausage muscles, here would detect that, detect pain back there. They try to protect it, and they would get really hard mm -hmm. to put up a barrier around it. But when that happened, it would just pull me to the ground. So what I did is I got on an exercise regime and found a chiropractor who would just stick his thumb right in those muscles and they would release. <laughs> and after that, I was a new man. Mm, wow. And I found a really good, I found the best anti-inflammatory. But, <laughs> uh, but it actually that diclofenac is, mm. so that actually did help a lot. So through exercise and the anti-inflammatory, uh, it's, it's pretty good now. Every now and then I have to get the chiropractor to come and release it, but uh, it's all right. Hmm. Um, the, the, and I remember when I was in, in 2008, I was in rehab and uh, you came to, to visit me just to, to show love and support. It meant so much. There was one uh, visit where you showed up and, and you had like full like your, your hair had grown out and i was like whoa knoxville's got gray hair and that, was, right. that was 2008 yeah I, I let it go gray for a little while uh -huh. i just got sick of it and but madison told me that she liked it dark and so i started coloring my hair my daughter madison told me she liked it dark so i started coloring my hair again uh-huh mm -hmm. i remember so, so when did uh when did you start when did you first color your hair In my late 20s that's crazy, man. Yeah, I was going gray soon. My dad was completely white-haired at 19. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Really? That's Steve Martin. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That, that, that's crazy, man. And, um, I mean, it, have you handled the, this, uh, this, what do you call it, the, the reveal? Like, uh, I think you had a fun way of describing all of a sudden uh, revealing the gray hair. Silver Foxville? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, yeah, I can't remember what I said, but it was something about, uh, I can't remember. Yeah, I remember but, writing you something about. Right, but who, and, and it just seems with, with full confidence, like, for, I think that, uh, for, I'm, I'm so much more of a sensitive, like, uh, character. You don't like going gray. I enjoy it. Yeah. Steve like, doesn't like aging at all. Yeah, Nothing I'm, about I'm aging. bummed on aging. Yeah. Well, you're in that, uh, I think everyone gets a little bummed on aging, but you're in that place where it's just a little gray right yeah. so you're you're just coming to terms with it i had many years to come to terms with it i knew what was under here yeah. you know yeah yeah so so was that like a very freeing like acceptance of growing old or just even like we've never been gray on camera before have you yeah was that hard to do no i was so i did feel liberated because like i'd have to go every three weeks to get my hair colored and after a couple of weeks it would start you'd see the white everywhere and it's just a drag mm -hmm. right so yeah, it seems like a lot of work it's a lot of work yeah 
and um, who thought we'd be talking about hair coloring on this? Yeah. <laughs> but, it's, but it's true. But I'm psyched. I'm so happy with that. I don't have to color it anymore, yeah. and I like. It, look, it looks what handsome. It looks like what the oh. I yeah, think sure. about, it looks yeah, great. A lot of uh, I've only seen really uh, positive feedback about it. And yeah, I, I think it's great. Do you guys have a favorite bit of the new Jackass? Do you guys have a? I I, I want to say how how impressive it is to me that the of all the Jackass guys, nobody lost their hair. Yeah, that's true. We don't even have any like legit bald spots. Yeah. Although there, when I had my dark hair in the beginning of the movie, yeah. there is a little like uh, <laughs> quarter size thing that Spike took care of. Never right. had a problem with it after that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, the, the the new movie, God, COVID screwed up movie theaters. But now, uh, if anybody's paying attention to the news, the the story is that that everybody's lifting the mask mandates. COVID is in such sharp decline, like. For the love of God, movie theaters are back this weekend, and it's time for everybody to get to the damn movie theater, mm. right? Yeah, fing fingers crossed this downturn keeps going down because the world, just not just everyone's been through it. The whole world's been through it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just riding the wave that the numbers are down and everyone can get to the theaters and enjoy the movie safely. Because yeah. there was 300 theaters closed last week for opening right. weekend? I think because a lot of, of people... Because snow, there's yeah. a snowstorm or something, right? It was oh. like a state of emergency in like 26 states from New Mexico to Maine. I was like, come on, like, what the fuck? On our opening weekend, right. we got to have the whole country snowed in with ice and sleet and, and states of emergency. Hopefully that's not going on this weekend. Yeah. And hopefully everybody's heard how ridiculously good Jackass Forever is. It's a critical darling. It's crazy <laughs> that the critics yeah. finally like us. Mm -hmm. You know, I think we got a little of that on Jackass 3D and a little bit on Bad Grandpa. And it's been so long since we made it. This is just my guess. I don't. I don't know anything about anything. I don't know shit from apple butter. But I think the critics now who are writing were in high school when the first Jackass came out, and they have a fond memory of it. And now they're in charge, right? They're running it. So, and I think also that I think we did a, a pretty good job with the film. So I think it's a mix of those two things. But could be other things yeah, yeah i think for the old school mind it was probably hard to see what you guys do as like sort of an art form and like sort of the beauty of the image of what it is but now it's like shit are we making art i think so i didn't know that <laughs> i yeah. mean it's like uh there's such a branded look and feel of jackass too that's like obviously very authentic it's not like something you guys sat down and wrote down but i've always been curious actually there's like a I'm, i edit steve's videos so like i'm you know like when did the you know you guys say a thing, blah, 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 yeah, good. And then everyone walks off camera. And the ca like the walk off camera, after you've like said your funny thing, is kind of like jackass branded thing. I don't Do you know, know what that I'm it talking always about? happens, but there's definitely like, if you get the sense that you've just put a button on something, you walk we off. have the instinct to get out of frame. Yeah. yeah. Like, did that, I don't know. When did that start? Or do, you, do you have any? Well, all I know is like, when I did the self-defense equipment article or the video, I introduced myself. I'm Johnny Knoxville, United States of America, and I introduced what I was going to do in the bit. And when we did the TV show, Spike said, you should introduce yourself every time. He really liked it. <laughs> wow. I'm like, all right. Great. Because Spike knows better than me. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, I mean, it's so great. So like, that's what started. Like, hi, I'm Steve-O. This is the butt chugger. I'm yeah, because wow. Spike's he, idea. Brilliant. Even though the, the first time... Um, and the, the first thing I did that for was the goldfish, and I couldn't do it. So Knoxville said, hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and this is Steve-O, and he's going to do the goldfish trick. <laughs> because you're nervous on camera. I was so nervous. I was useless on camera for, for the longest time. Now hey, we can't get him to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what? When, when I was particularly useless, it was on airplanes. <laughs> oh, God. You and Pontius, man, on airplanes were the, like. Why? Because you're just so fucked up? Yeah, I or mean, you didn't sleep for five days before, and then you went on an airplane. You know what I want to do? I want to make a YouTube video about the truth of Gumball Rally. Which oh was, uh, man! 
Oh man is right. You are about to get a juicy scoop on the truth of Gumball Rally, where we were really choking our chickens. Of course, no chickens were harmed on Gumball Rally, and no chickens were harmed in the making of Just Egg. This is made from plants. It's a bottle that you get at the supermarket, and it comes with this liquid egg program you pour it into the frying pan you make decadent delicious scrambled eggs egg sandwiches quiche it's super healthy too man zero cholesterol and in fact it's got cholesterol lowering polyunsaturated fat i'm telling you chicken eggs wish they were this healthy for you it's totally delicious man it's an exciting new product and i want you to go find it at the grocery store man it's out there it's epic they need you to know about it because it's that healthy it's for good people and if you're a good person you're gonna try it now let's hear about gumball rally shit show wait wait yeah but it, it was this this thing that they do every year with like a bunch of just obnoxiously wealthy people and all these luxury cars and they just pick some journey to go on. For us, it was we, we raced cars with millionaires from London to Russia and back in a huge circle through 12 countries. Some billionaires. Yeah. Mac, Max Cooper puts it together. But I remember, like, you think it's a bunch of millionaires and billionaires, and uh, but, but they had pretty good spirit. They oh, had pretty yeah. good spirits. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's the and, fun ones. Yeah, totally. I mean, if you're doing something like that, these guys yeah. want to, <clears throat> like, pedal to the metal, so. That was, that was a, a jackass special. And, like, how did that even come up? Like, a I was, I'd gone to London with um, Mike Ballard. Okay. Right? To film the, me getting shot out of a cannon in Brixton. Wow. And my friend John Morales drove us to Brixton, but he John had a friend, Max Cooper, and Max Cooper comes over and said, hey, I'm just getting this, I've done this a couple times, this gumball rally thing, do you guys want to do it? And so I took it to Jeff and Spike, and they thought it would be fun. And did MTV go for it right away? Or? Oh, I don't remember. I think at that time, MTV was pretty happy like to do what, I mean, the right. show was doing good, so. Mm -hmm. right. So, so we so we start out and it's it's Knoxville and and me and Pontius in the car with like one one other person. Pontius and I are in the back seat. With Gooch was driving yeah. and someone else, maybe Dimitri was in the front seat. So they had this big ceremony in, in uh, the middle of uh, the, like Hyde Park in in London. They're blowing up fireworks, all these and, it's, and start and all these luxury cars taking off. As soon as they start this this race, Pontius and I. <clears throat> To just start jacking up. <laughs> and I was between them. No. <laughs> you know, I'm in the back, but point no, I, between I, I, them. This seat is bad enough. <laughs> Why? Yeah. I, I think you were in the front. I think it was just the two no, of us no. in the back. Oh, really? I, I think okay. so. I think so. And, and and I don't even know why, but 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 um, we decided that we were going to have a, a contest to see who could blow the most loads in the car while it was moving and full of dudes. And... Uh, and, and, and we rubbed ourselves raw, like just, just leaving London. There were like double decker buses, like looking down on us, like, you know, as they passed. And uh, it wasn't until the dead of night when, when I got my, uh, when I got it done. And, and I, I remember. Like, Which is really you, weird for you because. Uh, <laughs> right. But to take that, that long. That is, means your first load you blew. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And 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 I, by the time I blasted that one, there was just something about being in the car full of dudes, and it yeah, of was course. you know like yeah, you know it was <laughs> you only when uh, everybody that. was <laughs> only once everybody was asleep except for the driver was I able to to get it done, and I blasted this window <laughs> so that I, I wake up Knoxville. I'm like, hey Knoxville, wake up, dude, film this, and and I could make Knoxville film. I'm like, pan for me and ask me what's that on the window, and I had shot it all over the window, and uh, then the, like the next morning. Knoxville switched cars. Yeah. <laughs> By the time we got to France, I was out of there. <laughs> Had fun. Like, uh, it was an A team, B team kind of a thing. Yeah. No, I was. Who won? 
Uh, we were tied four loads apiece oh, at the end. Wow. It was, I mean, their windows looked like a Krispy Kreme donut. It was just, <laughs> oh, and it's, the smell was, oh, God. That bleachy cum smell. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure. And I, when it's hot, it just. I, w I, was, I was outraged because we made sure we documented every single load. And M MTV didn't even show one. Yeah. <laughs> My goodness. The indignities this yeah. man has had to face. <laughs> but in the, in the history of Jackass, there's very like little that didn't make it somewhere. Somewhere. Yeah. You know, too hot for TV or right. right. You can kind of count them on uh yeah, I, I made a video and I put it on YouTube and, and included some of the things that I was like, "Oh yeah, and this wasn't even allowed on TV." And then like with within a very short time of me posting that video, I received a, a strike from from YouTube. Oh, really? Yeah. How many strikes you get? Yeah, you three strikes and your channel is deleted. For is there like it's deleted for a year or no, it's, it's gone. deleted it's deleted forever but like wow. but but yeah. but, but you're, a strike puts you on probation for like a certain amount of time and then the strike will will go away so how does that work do you now run your stuff by YouTube before you post it um it would be nice if everybody could do that but uh, you really got to just kind of you know. S censor maybe, yourself maybe, a little. Yeah, maybe you'll be you'll be kind of careful until the strike goes away. This the, the, this happened a while back. Oh, so, so how long do you should. keep the strike for? It's not lifetime. Yeah, it, it's not forever. No, the strike will go away after like I want to say ninety days or something. Okay. So so you don't have to like walk on eggshells too bad. Is that your only strike? Uh, I've had a th I had a warning and then two strikes and the two strikes went away but the warning stays I think. Hmm. Uh, but yeah, but, but we're in good shape now. Yeah, okay, the strike. The hot was, sauce? It, it was... Uh, that you can get at stevo.com? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> there, 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 was, there was the hot sauce that you can get at stevo.com and Amazon. <laughs> and uh, because we put it up in my butt, and we really showed it, like, putting it going in my butt and, like, you know, me pooping Shitting everywhere. It, out, it was yeah. kind of, like, in hindsight, that was... We're number three. <laughs> yeah. We're number three on Amazon right now, FYI. Yeah. With your uh, uh, hot, hot sauce? sauce? Yeah. That's but, great. But, 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 but the, the first, like, one, that, and it caught me off guard, I, I put the, the best, um, the best wake-up pranks of Jackass and Wild Boys. I thought, well, like, what a fun video, you know? Like, we have the, the mamba, and we slap people and everything. You were pure hell to wake up. Yeah. You woke up <laughs> spitting and wanting to fight. Yeah, for sure. The only time I was ever tough is right when he wake me up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then he calms down real quick. But, man, he comes out swinging. <laughs> he jumped out that window of right. the car. Yeah, but, but did. YouTube didn't like the wake-up pranks because um, it's like assaulting somebody who's not consenting, you know? Like, Ooh, they're, they're sleeping, the, yeah. and they're sleeping, and they, they can't consent and you're hitting them it's like an assault yeah but i mean you're right. filming with us so you're kind of consenting walking on exactly. the set but i understand that was but my yeah, intro I'm, to the whole video i was like you know i'm falling asleep on the very irresponsible thing mm -hmm. to do. you just want footage mm -hmm. yeah you're begging um, for it but but then i and then i got the strike for the one and, and i showed it too box downstairs i, I was like all right that was just so simple and dumb Knox could have been terrible. Oh, could have been terrible. Knoxville got in a fucking cardboard box with like a couple pillows. Cardboard box, they tape it up close and then just knock it down the stairs, end over end, dun, 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 down all these cement mm -hmm. stairs. It was a I don't know what I was thinking. You know, I you know, I'd been I just came off a, a film, right? And the guys had been kind of carrying the load and I hadn't been able to do a lot of right. dangerous yeah, stuff. You had, because I had been doing a film, and then I was like, I got, I got to get back into the swing of things and get everyone's respect. In my mind, that's why I was like, I had lost respect by doing mm -hmm. this film. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I might as well come out swinging. And oh man, I went. It goes skip, skip, and then it takes a big jump, and all the impact I absorbed on my lower back it just <laughs> slammed, and that just felt like pure hell. I probably uh, started my lower back problems right there. They had box downstairs, and it was like counterintuitive because you can, you can, you gotta like just trust that you're in the box. You can't see you, you know? right, 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 right. You know, without it being like a, a, a one long take without any cuts, like you know, you could have like. I mean, but nobody. That's the nobody thing. doubted it. Yeah. Nobody doubts us. Nobody, nobody doubts us. And, and what, what was the the other? Okay, there there was. Uh, I'm Johnny Knoxville, and I'm gonna get hit by a car real soon. Oh yeah, that was from the Big Brother video, I think. 
poop I mean, or boob. Pe- I don't know. Pe- yeah, I'm sure. Like, I can't put it on YouTube, so people probably don't even know about it. Yeah, yeah. The car. Like, what they was your see that? Uh, I, I don't know. Not sure. Buckle is sure. If they get there early, they can see it. But yeah. what was your strategy with the car? Because it hits you, but then you like end up on top of it like a cat like through the windshield right over away. onto the like, roof the car never slows down yeah was there my, a plan? my 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 only thing i wanted to do was get up on the hood i didn't want to have my knees taken out right mm-hmm. yeah. so i just tried to get up on the hood and after that i it, it was that car incredible. was hauling it's the most epic fucking shot he says i'm johnny knoxville and i'm gonna get hit by a car real soon he's standing in the middle of the road and sure enough the car just comes goes blowing right through the frame he goes through the windshield the car never stops and 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 later somebody asked you there was a quote in big brother like what what were you thinking standing there getting hit by a car and knoxville's answer was oh well i wore two pairs of jeans so i'd be safe <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i i and i think i i was totally Serious, because I there I do have those irrational ways to think that I'm safe. I remember when I was doing the Python or the Anaconda ball pit. Mm. I was like, man, what I have to avoid here is the snake biting my wrists and severing my arteries. So you put on a. I a put a strip of electrical tape around my wrist, <laughs> and in my head, it was like. There I'm safe. safe. Yeah. I'm safe. But little did I know, after I filmed that bit. The guy was like, yeah, one of these anacondas took off someone's calf muscle last week. <laughs> but in my head, those, that electrical tape saved right. me. That was your suit of armor. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and another one was when you, when you shot yourself with the Smith & Wesson 38 caliber handgun. And you're wearing like a used three hundred dollar bulletproof vest. You tucked some porno magazines under it. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> to thinking that was going to help. And it wasn't. It was a brand new vest, but it was the cheapest uh, one they made. Oh, gotcha. But yeah, I had some leg worlds up there, and whatever <laughs> Flint had, whatever Tremaine got from Flint, just laying around. And, and, and you said there was a shot. Uh, that it was on camera. Like you're, you're trying to shoot yourself, and porno magazines are falling out of the bulletproof. Yeah, they vest. fell out. <laughs> and then I bent over to pick it up, and so I'm stuck to back in and I have the gun pointed right at the camera. <laughs> it's just so like, oh. irresponsible. Wow. And, and, and yeah. Was it by design that you just put one bullet in the gun so that you'd have the suspenseful like click, click? I put, it wasn't by design just to put one bullet in the gun, but it the the whole it going around, I thought it was like going to be one shot and over, but I didn't know anything about guns, so it went all the way around. <laughs> but it helped. Yeah. Oh, my oh, yeah. God. That footage is intense. I, I'm trying to think. What the, okay, so another one that, that was never allowed to see the light of day, and it was genius, was uh, the hardware store. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Tell us about that one. Um, I put on a prison orange jumpsuit and get handcuffed and get my hair all dirty and my face full of mud and I go in the hardware store out of breath and I'm like oh can you help me get these off you know referring to the handcuffs you have a hacksaw (laughs) oh yeah 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 and we did that once just randomly right me Spike Jeff and someone else and we didn't have any camera hides or anything and but like it got a huge reaction and like four or five carloads of cops show up and they all have their guns out, and Spike and Jeff are like, what do we do? Do, do we take off? Or, you know? the, the, the best footage was that the, one of the cops pulls up, like it screams into, into frame, and the footage is great. The cop gets out of their car, but doesn't put it in park. So oh, this fuck. cop jumps out of the car, and the car just, this cop car just continues and crashes into a fucking like, telephone pole. Yeah. yeah that's and, 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 that was the second time we did it. Yeah, and, and the uh, cop... And the, oh, but so the cops came both times you did it. Yeah, the cops came both times we did it, but it wasn't covered because we didn't know what we were getting into, right? And we didn't know, but... So it was poorly covered, and we had to do it again. And the second time, that's when the cop didn't put her car in park, and it hit the telephone pole. And by that time, I was on the ground with my hands out here. I'm like, oh, no. We're really in trouble now. And she she, she goes up to Noxa laying there with her gun on. She says, why aren't you in jail? (laughs) Right. And, God, and she told me afterwards, she goes, if you would have moved one little bit or tried to get away, I would have put the bullet in your ear. Yeah. 
So I knew, like, when cops drew their guns, just do what they say. Yeah. Um, and I asked her afterwards, I'm like, was this the oddest call you've ever been on? She goes, no, I had one guy buck naked up the top of a palm tree, and he was on, uh, like, PCP or something. And he slid all the way down the palm oh. tree, balls and all. <laughs> he was straight to the mental hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Ballless. <laughs> was there any punishment for the bit? Like, did you get any? I, 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 I seem to recall that there was a lawsuit that was settled for like 5000 uh, Our One of our producers got arrested. Vina Meta, Meta got arrested. And I regretted that because... I was on the set. I was the one who should have got arrested, but mm -hmm. I really didn't know how things worked. And sure. uh, but that was taken care of. And uh, why'd she get arrested? Because she was her name was on the the. Paperwork? They're like, uh, who's producing here? Who's producing here? And she's the one who stepped up. Yeah. Mm. So one of my favorite bits, and it, I'm not sure if it's on the Jackass, but the, certainly the Big Brother was uh, when you ordered the eggs and bacon, and you All switched right. the bacon out, and you put shit. Dog, there, poo, dog yeah. shit in there. <laughs> My <laughs> sausage looks like poop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was a good bit. Yeah, up until then, I had been doing stunts, and that was the first prank I did, and I don't know yeah, why that was this. why I thought of that. <laughs> but it, It's so good. I'm, I'm trying to think of it. Like, There's really very little that, that, that couldn't ever see the light of day. I got branded the heart over my heart. They said they wouldn't show sizzling, smoking flesh. <laughs> it, it, see, we said you could get branded. We, yeah, we, we said you could you could shoot it, but we didn't say anything about airing footage of sizzling, smoking flesh. <laughs> like, what the fuck do you think branding is? Yeah. 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 The vomlet didn't get aired. Yeah, the vomlet. Yeah, with Dave England. Uh, Even though the, the reshoot of it did. I yeah, think. yeah, but the original was much funnier because it was one of the, it's one of those ideas where, yeah. it's like the super glue, from mm -hmm. Jackass right. Number Two. It was a rainy day, and what we'd wanted to shoot was we could no longer shoot. And right. Dave England said, "Hey, I can eat all the ingredients for an omelet and then puke it up into a frying pan, frying pan, and cook it, and then Feed you how you you volunteered <laughs> to to eat it." It was just a shit show. And Man, Florida, Manny, the room's Manny hot. Was, yeah. And, mm -hmm. Manny was there. Manny loved that shit so much. Yeah. The naming of bits is always like crucial, like yeah. vomlet or right, butt right. chug or whatever. When, yeah. uh, the first time you met Manny, you, uh, were, like, you were like, okay, like, I, I want to get bitten by a rattlesnake. Manny says, you can't do that. <laughs> right. And, and you're like really pushing for it. No, no, no. Like, just let, let the rattlesnake bite me. And, and we learned that when Manny says uh, no, that, that means fucking no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Manny is sketchy about it, then it's like, all right, all right. Because when Manny says yes, that doesn't necessarily mean you're good. <laughs> <laughs> what was that when you were getting, you were before the, uh, you were hanging out over the alligator pit? And oh, what was yeah, his safety he, he plan? Says, <laughs> he says, if an alligator gets a hold of Steve-O, Steve-O will relax. And hopefully the alligator will release him. <laughs> yeah, he, oh, he's so great. I remember like one of the. It might have been the first time I ever filmed with 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 uh, Manny when we went out to do the hammerhead thing. It was the first, well, the first day on the with sharks and Manny, and uh, they chopped barracuda in half and, and strung them all up and like bloody and just. Chum, I chopped up barracuda fish strapped all over me, and and then Manny put me in the water with the sharks. <laughs> Chummed you. Yeah, and I remember my dad saw it, and he was, my dad says, how could it possibly be safe to be covered in chum swimming with sharks? And I looked at dad like, dad, Manny was there. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh my God. Get off my case. Yeah, fuck. <laughs> Manny's like my little uh, force field. Yeah, that's how I feel about uh, Gary LeFew with the bull. Yeah. I mean, I feel that way about Manny, too. He's, he, he, right. he's, just, he's Tarzan. Right. Right? And you do feel, even though you're doing something fucked, you do feel like somewhat safe just because he's there. Mm -hmm. And the same way with Gary LeFew with Bulls. For sure. Uh, <laughs> I just always feel like he's, well, he always, he's always got my back and he always has. He hires the best bullfighters because uh, they're crucial. Because if you go, if you get KO'd, 
and uh, you're alone in the ring with the bull, it, it could be even yeah. worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. There was a time where, the, the, you know, everyone's going to know this with Manny, where we put the fish hook through my face and, and cast me out to the sharks. Manny's, <clears throat> Manny's chopping up the, you know, he's just chumming the water, treading water, hacking up fish, and he sees this mako shark going after me like it's going to bite my foot. And, and in one of the very few times Manny ever became uncomfortable while filming, like I heard him, he, he screams, steve watch out! Right? And, and I hear that, and so I'm like, fuck, I, I panic, and I go to, like, you know, kick and to, to go swim away. And in that motion, I inadvertently kick the mako shark in the head as it's going for my foot. Yeah. Which was like arguably one of the closest calls I've ever had. Yeah. And and, and I think I've, it was like years later, I asked Jeff Tremaine. I said, Jeff, dude, if that mako shark bit my foot, we were two hours away from the, the coast of Hurricane Katrina devastated Louisiana. Like, what the fuck was the plan? Like, <laughs> like a helicopter? I mean, like, what? And, and, and Tremaine said, oh, we didn't have a plan. We got God. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you explain how lucky we've been? I, well, I was in Arkansas getting ready to do the riot control test. And I was talking to Jeff and talking about casting you out to sea with the hook through your mouth, chummed up waters with sharks. And I was like, Jeff, what, what is the, uh, how does, how what, do you, how do you what's the best off? case scenario of this? Because <laughs> how's it going to, I mean, if we get footage, that means something terrible's happened. And how do we air that? Like, what are we going right. for here? And he's like, oh, no, it'll be great. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I really had questions about that. So it was one of those things where right. it couldn't have went any better. Like, you didn't get right. hurt, but you almost got annihilated. You almost were missing the foot. Right. I mean, it, like, it's a great, Jeff. You, you've, you've explained the, the beginning and the middle, but... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the end, there's only one way for this to end, for it to air. Right. right. I, I remember being troubled by that bit, but... Yeah. I wasn't so troubled that I said, don't do it. But I, remember being, <laughs> I, did have, I did have pause. I was thinking of you, Steve. Yeah, pause. Right. Yeah. And, and it was the same thing with the alligator tightrope. I, 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 as I understood it, my job for the alligator tightrope, I was like, oh, yeah, and then tomorrow I'm getting bit by an alligator. Like, I'm going to walk on the tightrope, fall off, and then in the alligator pit, and then I get bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, that was another one. I, I remember feeling like not getting bit by the alligator and it just taking the chicken out of the jog strap to me that it like felt the, the way you described getting on a so so bull i was like oh man like you know i've lost my respect i showed up to get attacked by an alligator no 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 and, but that was great did. you didn't because yeah, you could have yeah you very well could have and you stuck it out and you did all you needed to do yeah so I mean, that's they, a great bit. Yeah, and in hindsight, I'm not I'm not upset about it, but uh, but I remember thinking, oh, I really got away with one today. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, yeah. What, what are some of the other like just crazy like where we've got angels? I mean, I I, I think about Jack as I really believe that oh, the we've rock, got like the some, rocket for the rocket. Knoxville. Yeah, the rocket. it not only almost killed me, but one rocket goes out back like. 150 yards and goes right between Cassick and Scott Manning's ear. It just shut, and that would have decapitated one of them or mm -hmm. both of them. It was a foot long metal rod. Mm -hmm. That was an angel. Um, the the steel wall falling on me at the end of Jackass number All two. All right. Because the the guy who rigged it is like, you get to your mark, don't move. It's a this is a <laughs> this is a steel wall. You will die if it hits you. And then what happened <laughs> that's was... Like, that's like Travis Pastrano telling you not to let go of the bike. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not listening. Like, before I do a stunt, I don't... Sometimes I, I... You can be talking to me, but you can see in my eyes that I'm far away. Wow. <laughs> you know? I remember seeing the wall hit you thinking, like, that was, that was the bit, you know, like... No, no, that wasn't supposed to happen. Wow. And uh, I remember on the set, I had had... Uh, my daughter come down because I thought this is like no one's going to get hurt today we're just it's pretty casual mm -hmm. and then at that door that steel wall slammed me and it goes silent on the set except for Madison she goes 
Dad, what are you doing, you idiot? <laughs> and then everyone started laughing after that because, you know, I moved around a little, so. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, and the, like, the, the, the golf cart with... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that could have been... That was almost real bad. Yeah. That was... I feel like for, for, for years after that, the golf cart was referred to as the incident. Or the like incident? That. <laughs> yeah, like... Because that, that one was really, really scary. But yeah, we, we've we've been we've been incredibly fortunate, man. We've had a lot of incidents. And uh, <clears throat> you, you know, this is something that, that with the concussions, I tell you know, I can't say it enough. I fucking hate when when you get in front of bulls, even on Jackass Number Two, like in the footage in that that movie. I'm just like, uh, I'm so visibly like not okay with it. I, I never was okay with the bulls, and um, with the uh, you know, all the the butter bean with the the on your action point. Like, there's been so many concussions. You know who's super worried about your uh, concussions is Dr. Drew. Right. I don't know like why he's privy to like the the extent of your uh, concussion history, but he, right. he but he's he seems to be well aware of it and highly concerned. And I think that he exacerbated my concerns. So. <clears throat> You know, I said this to uh, to the men's health reporter. I was like, you know, like with with uh, Knoxville's brain, and my dad being seventy eight years old, like everything my dad says, every conversation, I'm like scanning it. You know, like right. it's like 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 please God, don't let there be any dementia coming in. Mm -hmm. And I do the exact same thing with Knoxville. Like every text, every conversation, like <laughs> is that has 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 the concussions fucked up his brain? Like is, you know, is he still there? <clears throat> and uh, you and my dad like have uh, you know never never faltered. Yeah, my brain was fucked up for a while after the this last one. It was for a few months that um, I, it was scrambled. Yeah, I mean, dude, the treadmill was nothing compared to that bull hit, and right. and and I had headaches and and irritability and fucking memory problems for like three weeks after the treadmill. Yeah, no, I. It was, you know, I I got all kinds of cognitive tests and just scored so low on most every. Thing I, I the the doc, neurologist is like, hey, do you have trouble paying attention? I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, because I was trying to edit, mm -hmm. and I couldn't sit still, right? And he's like, because you scored a 17 on the uh, attention portion of the... And I was like, out of 20? He's like, out of 100. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> out of 20. Yeah. <laughs> the like, forever optimist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, oh. mm -mm. Wow. Yeah, so in that... When something no, like I had that to go on antidepressants eventually, because it just started... It just started spiraling downwards, and it, it, the, the antidepressants help reset my brain. Wow. So, uh, and you know, time, time helped my brain to heal and recover. Wow! But uh, didn't mean to bring the show down. No, 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 that's no okay. I'm just going to smoke a cigarette during that. Like time. when a, when a doctor's giving you kind of bad news like that or bleak news at least. Like, are you you're you able to stay optimistic or do you get like, were you actually kind of scared? Like, fuck, maybe this is, like, not going to get better. Uh, a, a little scared, but I am pretty much an optimist, so I just have to believe that I'm going to get better. Even, like, when I was a kid with asthma, mm -hmm. I'd be in, the, in and out of the hospital all the time, right? Mm -hmm. And couldn't breathe, had to spend the night in the hospital. I just kept thinking, I'm going. this is going to get better. This is going to get better, because it was pretty scary, right, when you were a little kid, and, like, yeah. I almost died when I was eight. Um, but I just think, thought like, <laughs> fuck it. I'm like everyone else, and I'm just, I just got to get through this. Jackass four and theaters everywhere. Yeah, Growing I mean, dude, in the world. everybody get to the theater, man. I'm gonna say this in the intro too. I've got to, man. Sure. Like, like the, the COVID numbers plummeted. Fucking, it's okay to go to the movie. It's theater. everywhere around the world. Yeah, uh, there's not everywhere countries. yet, but a, it's, it's doing a lot really of places. well around the world. Yeah, it's doing really cool. well. And it's really, really good. We yeah. want you to go see it. We want you to be wearing a Dick House shirt when you go see it. So, so, so get that Dick House shirt. We should probably put those on your website too, right? I, I like we said, I took I took photos with Will Fox wearing them, and then and then we'll put the Johnny O boards right behind those. Yeah, get yourself a, a, a both Knoxville and I signed these special Johnny O skateboards. Get yourself one of those get you the get the mobile
whole game, the jackass slingshot. You know, the boombox. The get shoes. The, get, get, get the boombox, get the shoes, get the hot sauce. I got oh, the, Jesus <laughs> Christ. I, 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 I think it's time we wrap. And, uh, <laughs> Dude, oh, you know what? I, I, I want to say it. I should have said this sooner, but, but I, I say this often and, and I mean it every time, which is that I can't thank you enough and I can't express enough gratitude just in general, like how much it means to me that in all of my little, like, uh, side projects, all my little Stevo things, like how you've always taken the time to, to, to read my books, to watch my videos, to critique my comedy specials, like no matter what the project is, everything I've ever sent you and asked you for feedback, not only have you taken the time to really, really check out the project, but you've given like very thoughtful, constructive feedback. And, and you didn't ever have to do that. And, and you doing that, like, it, it makes me feel so emotional. Like I, I could just cry because, oh. because your support in, in doing that for me, uh, fuck, it, it, it means the world to me. Well, I love you and I'm proud of you and I'm happy to see you flourishing and, you know, so I'm um, happy to do it. I love you, and I'm proud I love of you, you buddy. too. I like I, I love you so much, man. Your opinion matters so much to me. You're, uh, you're like you're a big brother figure. You're a hero. You're uh, you're the captain, man. And um, you know everything good in my life really came from you. My sobriety, my career, my uh, well. Like I helped in some areas, but none of this would happen if it hadn't been for you, right? You took responsibility. Sure. You kicked the ass. You stayed committed. None like of, what? Of, my, well, I, I gave you nudges a couple of times, but of you're it, the yeah. one who took the uh, bull by the horns. I think that works here, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what's so impressive. Like, there's a lot of people that have, you know, have uh, chemical dependency issues or whatever they're dealing with, and they can never they can never get it licked but like credit to you you know you not only have taken care of that but i've never seen you better in your whole life well thank you man um you you got me started in, in every one of those good things and in, in my career and my sobriety it was you who got me started and uh i'm i'm so grateful for that and and i really think too that that our relationship is is stronger better closer now than it ever has been before and, and yeah that's uh, accurate yeah we're 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 clear yeah right we're we're we're, we're absolutely clear and uh I, you know, I, I'm easier to be around than I used to be. Still kind of tough. Small doses is better. Me, me too. Like, <laughs> I, I have my issues. And uh, uh, whereas I would stay distracted with what I was distracted with, you would you were the same way. You were headed one way. I was always headed another. And now yeah. it's like we can sit and talk. Yeah. I, I love it so much. I love you. Thank you. Love you, my, buddy. Thank you for my life and my career. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little that's stretching it but uh <laughs> yeah. it's a good way to end he's a showman he's a showman there people you go. yeah i love it good night everybody yeah. that's just got to make you feel good huh i mean fuck i love that dude i love that it was a long time coming and i'm so glad we finally made it happen sorry about those two weeks off too man the the one week off was just because we were so busy with the movie and the press junket and everything and then the week off after that was because of the stupid covid you know i fucking tested positive for covid and even if it looks like it, the test didn't say positive in that video we put out there was the faintest little thin line on there and uh that was the second positive so yeah i mean I, but nothing happened to me man i didn't get sick it was just a dumb test but whatever I digress. I'm getting emotional. I'm getting riled up. Uh, thank you for sticking around to the end. You know, uh, I love you. And get on over to steveo.com and get yourself the Johnny O skateboard, man. Look at that thing, dude. It's sick. All right. Thanks, everybody. Phew. I walk off camera like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs>